Science experiments, he said. They're fun, he said. However, this time it was different. This time something went wrong and we ended up being shrunk to the size of tiny ants. Terrified, nervous, shocked, we entered the classroom and delicately stepped over the gigantic equipment. George balanced carefully on the pencil sharpener whilst Olivia worked out how to get him down. Glow sticks the size of skyscrapers, computer screens the size of football pictures, shelves as high as cliff tops. We finally knew what it must be like to live in the world of mini beasts. Anxiously, we explored our colossal surrounds. How could we possibly get out of this mess? Just when we thought it could get any worse, we felt the floor begin to tremble. What could it be? Suddenly from nowhere, the giant brush came crashing down near us. If only we could make ourselves heard, James screamed. Exhausted and worried, shocked and dizzy, it was like we caught in the middle of a tornado as we were brushed into the dirty dustpan. Help, we cried. Stop, but it was no good. Our quiet, squeaky voices could not be heard. It was too late, we were doomed. But just then, we were greeted by a friendly aunt who took us on an adventure to meet some of his mini beast friends. He reassured us that we needn't to be frightened, as mini beasts are amazing. Aunt taught us some incredible facts. For example, did you know that caterpillars can be plain, or patterned, hairy, or smooth? But the one thing they all have in common is they eat lots. These small green ones will keep munching until all the leaves have gone. Spiders don't eat leaves. Instead, they eat creatures they catch in their webs. With eight legs, they can move quickly to reach the insects they've caught. An animal that eats other animals is called a carnivore. Centipedes are carnivores too. They have two fangs which release poison and they use them to stop their dinner from getting away. Each tiny section or segment of a centipede's body has two legs, so it has lots and lots of legs along the length of its body. Millipedes also have lots of legs, four on each body segment. They can move really fast, but they don't need to hunt because the millipedes only eat plants and leaves. They are herbivores. Earthworms stretch and pull themselves forward through the soil. The tiny tunnels they leave behind makes the soil crumbly and good for growing things in. Gardeners love earthworms, but not slugs. With thousands of tiny teeth, slugs eat the garden's favourite plants. Slugs are covered in slime to help them move across dry things. Inside its hard shell, the snail is slimy too. These stripy shells belong to banded snails. The stripes help the snails to hide in the grass and stay safe. But these beetles want to be seen. Their bright red wings warn hungry birds that ladybirds won't taste good. Earwigs help to keep a garden tidy by eating dead leaves and plants. They have tiny wings but hardly ever fly. Stag beetles look fierce, but they only eat nectar and rotting fruit. They buzz loudly when they fly on summer evenings, but they won't hurt you. So we have learnt that mini beasts are amazing and many are really useful, like this ant who has promised to get us back to school safely. The door, the door, Jamie cried. It's open. We all squeeze through the tiny gap in the door and help each other onto the table where Mr. Ross used a magnifying glass to see us. Relieved, excited, thankful, we walked into his huge hands. Concernedly, he slowly closed them together and moved us into the safety of his top pocket. One by one, we all jumped in. We had to stay quiet so Mr Whittaker wouldn't find out what had happened. Mr Rod had to find a way to make us tall again, and quickly.